right, today I'm gonna to be working on my 1991 Toyota Land Cruiser. I'm gonna do some maintenance and I'm gonna do an oil change. And after the oil change, I'm gonna be doing a full coolant flush. So I'm gonna show you the process of both in two separate videos, so stay tuned. This Land Cruiser has 269,000 miles. It starts up real good. It's got a lot of power and I don't really see any issues with it, but I'm doing this preventative maintenance because these are known to go 400, 500,000 miles with just maintenance. So hoping to get the best life out of this since I just got it. All right, we're gonna get started with the oil change. Check your owner's manual to see what oil is right for your motor. It's gonna tell you what you need. I'm gonna use Royal Purple Full Synthetic 5W30. That's just my preference. You could use whatever you'd like. Another thing I wanna point out is this is a 91 Land Cruiser 80 series. So this came with the 3FE motor. This is not the FZJ80, this is the FJ80. So just keep that in mind, but that's okay. Uh, the concept is the same. I'm gonna unscrew this cap here just to let the oil flow through a little better and we're gonna get down under. All right, so we're gonna, sorry, it's kind of windy. We're gonna go down this way on the right side of the vehicle. We're gonna go under. And I already have everything kind of ready. Um, what you're gonna look for is, you'll see this like belly pan or oil pan here. And at the bottom of the belly pan, you're gonna see a bolt, just a single bolt. We're gonna unscrew that. We're gonna use a 14 millimeter or take it out. So one thing to keep in mind, if the engine is hot or you've been running it for a while, uh, be careful because the oil come up, could come out really hot so I drove it around for maybe 15, 20 minutes, uh, but I also let it sit for about another 10, 20 minutes. So now I know that it's probably not too hot. Okay, I've already loosened it up a bit. It shouldn't be too hard and the rest will be by hand. You wanna make sure that you kind of move this around, to make sure it catches it. And if it's a windy day, uh, just be careful because it might splash all over. I did put a piece of cardboard down to avoid that. So, here we go. There we go, it's catching it there. And while I'm down here and while it's flying out, I highly recommend one of these um, kind of oil pan catchers. Uh, it's pretty big and it'll be able to hold all the oil that comes out of it. I used to have the different one where it had like the little mesh lining. It wasn't as great and I would always drop this screw in there and it was a pain to get out so don't get those get one of these it's super easy and it's very hard for it to actually fall in there okay so as we see the wind is kind of picking up so i'm going to push that this way so it doesn't splash all over the place and want to get it real centered and once we have like a couple trickles um kind of coming out of there then i'll go ahead and screw it up and while that's slowly trickling, I'm gonna show you where the oil filter is. It's right down there. And it's between all of these kind of tubes here. So it's gonna be a little tricky to get to if you are not super tall like me. You might need a little ladder <laughs> to get in there, uh, but we're gonna unscrew that. Looks like it has like a a head that you could use maybe like a wrench or something um i'm gonna try to undo it by hand uh, once it finishes uh, to avoid any sort of uh, uh you know damaging of the wires around it back there's the distributor back there so i don't want to mess up anything with the wires over there so i'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull that off once we see a slow trickle down there as you can see, it's come to a very slow trickle. Um, I think that should be fine. Some people like to leave it there longer. I'm not too picky. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and hand tighten this first. And then once I can't tighten it no more, I'm gonna go over it with the socket. All right, now that's all nice and tight using the 14 millimeter socket. Uh, don't tighten it too much, just enough. Uh, don't over tighten it, because then it's <laughs> you're gonna have trouble when you have to uh, take it off again when you do your maintenance again. Another thing is I did is I grabbed the old towel, old shop towel, and just kind of cleaned it up around here because I want to be able to tell 
if there is an oil leak somewhere. So just doing that will kind of give me an idea of where the oil leak is coming from. If there is an oil leak in that way, uh, it looks clean at the bottom as well. So just a little tip. Before we take off the oil filter, I want you to see where it's kind of going. If you look down, you see that little red cap. That's where uh, my oil catcher is. Um, but I'm gonna get under and so you can see where the oil is kind of gonna drip down. You're gonna wanna put a piece of cardboard down just in case you miss uh, because it will kind of spray all over and you don't wanna clean up uh, a big oil mess. So, All right, so we did take it off. It leaked, but we had cardboard here. Uh, the way that we took it off was we used a one inch socket here and we're able to take it off. So if you're not familiar with oil changes, we're gonna screw that onto the motor and I'll show you how to do that. I'm not if you, sure if you can see that right there, but that's where uh, it'll screw on. You wanna screw it on hand tight, nothing too crazy, and screw it on right, make sure it sits down. Uh, I did a, made a mistake one time where I screwed it on and it didn't screw on all the way and I turned on the car and uh, oil sprayed all over the garage and my dad was not happy and um, I had to go buy new oil because I didn't screw it on the right way. So make sure it seats right um, and then just double check. I usually go around the oil filter with my hand to make sure there's no gap and if there is no gap then you're good, um, it should be fine. Uh, and if there is a gap, just unscrew it and try to screw it back in. It might take you a couple tries if you haven't done it before. So just hand tight, make sure it's just nice and hand tight, nice and tight, and you should be good. And now we can start pouring the oil in here. Uh, it is eight quarts that we're gonna pour in here. All right, it's all filled up. Mine was eight quarts. One last thing that I would like to mention uh, check your owner's manual to check what kind of oil uh, you need for your motor. Um, mine was 5W30, and I chose uh, Royal Purple synthetic oil, but that's what I chose. You don't have to choose that. Uh, and then one last check, just go through and make sure that there's nothing leaking anymore. Check your oil filter, uh, check your screw, make sure it's tight, and then now you can turn on the car, and then you can check um, your fluid levels. So we'll do that now. Okay, it's turned on. We're gonna let it run for a minute or so without revving it. Just let the oil kind of flow all the way through. And once it's kind of been running for a while, then we can go ahead and check the oil levels. You can check it right here. Right there, that's where the oil level is. Well, we're gonna check the engine oil and we're gonna see if it's good. If we need more, we'll put more. All right, oil level looks good. We are good to go. And that's good. That was it, guys. Thank you for watching the 1991 Toyota Land Cruiser oil change. Hope you learned something. If you didn't, leave it in the comments below. Have a good one.